Howdy, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be upgrading one of the water systems here in the shop for the calving machine. And this is something that you can do at home too. Let's get into it. So this is the current setup in place. We have a clean water intake for the calving machine. Then we have a wastewater bucket. This works great for a long time. The only downside is having to stop mid project to refill the clean water and then dump the wastewater. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but you know, when it's winter time and you can't really go outside and use the hose and you have to go use the bathtub. It just takes up time. <laughs> it's and the end. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a time waster. I used the same system over on the other machine over yonder, uh, but we're not going to worry about that today. We're just going to worry about this one um, just because I use the blue calving machine the most. And um, it's just nice to have to really sit in one spot, not to worry about water for the duration of the project. So let's go ahead and get into the materials that we're going to use today. So the materials that we're going to use today is a seven gallon container that I just got at a local hardware store, Home Depot. Not sponsored, but I, I go there a lot. Um, so we got that and then we have, of course, lid that goes with it. We're going to use this for this project. I have some sponges that's going to act as a improvised uh, filtration system. I'll cover that here in a second. And then we have this little itty bitty container. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this container. We're gonna stencil it out here on the top of this lid. We're gonna cut out a hole, flip the container upside down, have it sit in the hole, but not completely in the, inside this container here. And then we're gonna use these sponges to kind of, um, well, first we're gonna cut some more holes in this container to allow water in, but we're gonna use these sponges to act as a filter to keep out any debris or grit or whatever to reach the pump before it comes back up to the machine. And then we're going to drill a hole here on the top of the lid for the water to drain back into so the container can recycle the water and reuse it so we don't have to keep refilling up the buckets of water every single time. It is important to note that I have tried this once before with a bigger container when I used to have the lapidary cart before I took it down. Um, it was a great idea, but here's here's the thing, and this I'm going to say this right now. This is only good for... A day at a time when you're done with your project you're done for the day you're done for the night take this water empty it out and rinse everything off and then um just leave it empty until you have to go back the next day to fill it up and i say that because uh I, when i did this with a larger system um i'm not really one to like to have to use uh, bleach or chlorine to kind of keep the water clean to keep it free from um you know build up of uh, mildew whatever might be on the inside um it <laughs> The last bucket I made, it, the water smelled awful. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do this again. So I thought about it. This is a much smaller container than what I did before. And so since it's going to be a much smaller scale, I'm going to go ahead and redo this just for the cabbing machine. And it's easy to fill up the water. Again, just empty it when you're done for the night and then refill back up the next day. Okay, I already started drawing. <laughs> I had to adjust the camera. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're gonna, we've are we already started kind of tracing out uh, where the bucket's going to be. And uh, so we're going to trace around there so we know where to stay within. Okay. This part doesn't matter. It can go wherever. So I trace, I use the top of the bucket to trace the hole because I actually need to... The bucket's going to go this way in, so it's going to be dropped in from the bottom. I need to make sure that I know where not to cut past here on the top. So this bucket will have a nice little lip to kind of sit within. So even though I traced out that far, I need to only be cutting somewhere like right in here all the way around. This won't be perfect, but it'll work.
probably whiten that a little bit. Perfect. Perfect in every way. Cool. All right. For this step, I'm just going to use a one inch paddle drill, paddle bit, whatever you want to call it. And we're just going to drill some holes. Now, it. I am going to drill the holes closer to the bottom since this part is going to be smarter than the water. So that is important to know. So uh, we don't need a whole lot, just a couple, a few. Mm. One more. Good enough. Actually, we're going to use a little bit of fire just to kind of clean up the edges here. I could, I could use a knife, but uh, you know, fire. A little bit of fire. Clean up the edges, no big deal. Okay, we're done with that. All right, now for the sponges. So when I first bought these, I figured I would go ahead and try to cut it in half, but I'm almost thinking maybe. Yeah, we're gonna try to cut these in half. So we're gonna use our same knife here. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> okay. And what we're going to do, you're just simply going to sponge we're just gonna wedge it in there this doesn't have to be perfect because uh, what's gonna happen is when this gets wet the sponge is gonna expand and then um, it should in theory help to filter out any debris from getting to the pump and then from there going to the cabbing machine so that's done all right so I think I want to have the holes on this side of the container that way um, in theory it should help prevent even more from debris from coming from the waste pipe up and around. But we still need to have a hole for the drain. That should be big enough. The next step is reusing the base that we had for the buckets. This part's quite simple. It's just, just taking out the screws that I had here to make sure the buckets didn't move around and just readjusting them for the new uh, tote here. All right, that part's done. So the next step is to actually go wash this out because uh, when you get these in the store, they're not necessarily clean. They have a residue in here that is kind of keeps them from sticking to the other plastic containers. So we need to go wash that out. All right, this part pretty easy. This is where we just kind of put everything back together. So we have our lid. We have our reservoir for our pump. I'll take a second for the water to soak in. Of course, it'll take a minute for the sponges to soak up the water. We have our pump. 
Just plop it in there in place. And then we have our drain plug, just like that. So just to reiterate, this is mainly for kind of a once a day usage. When you're done at the end of the day or end of the night when you're done with your project, empty this out, rinse it out, and then leave it empty until the next day. Um, or even you can just even refill it then and then that way it's good for the next day. But just don't leave the standing water in there for a long period of time. Otherwise you're gonna get some funky smells going on with your water. Let's go ahead and test this out really quick. Turn it on. You can see the water is going just fine. Let's see if I can find the spot. Water is flowing. We're not using, losing water out of the reservoir. So it's draining just fine. Success. Hopefully you enjoyed today's DIY project and hopefully you can utilize it in your shop or workspace. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section down below and don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, yeah, stay safe out there and rock on.